Well, it's about two weeks before the end. This is going to be my last video. Why would someone show their crimes online? Hey guys. This case is about a man who wanted to be famous online and made bad choices on his way. So, it's just going to be a point of, you know, go as far as I can. My, I do have my escape, and that's death. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Peter Keller shockingly took the lives of his wife, daughter, and even his dog, then shared these acts on the internet. We'll look at how chasing likes and views can lead to bizarre and terrifying results. It's actually more comfortable for me to think about living out here, um, robbing banks, pharmacies, just taking what I want for as long as I can. At least it'll be exciting. It won't be boring and I don't have to worry about Lynette or Kayleen and everything will be taken care of, It'll just be me. A woman lives a good life with her caring husband, but she faces a big problem that she can't avoid. She knows trouble might come soon, but she's not sure what will happen. Meanwhile, Peter Keller's family doesn't know about his scary change. He used to enjoy his hobbies, but he turned into someone who does unspeakable things. Videos he made showed how he changed from liking his hobbies to hurting others. This trail needed to remain a part of a hidden journey. Peter's activities in North Bend, Washington remain unclear. His self-recording as a killer is unusual, especially since his casual on-camera demeanor hides his dreadful intentions. Probably gonna be my last video till after that. I just wanted to get one last video in before. Uh, that time. So far, I've come to terms with it. I'm doing okay. It's starting to accept it. it. Doesn't really freak me out anymore like it did sometimes. When he wasn't exploring the wild with his camera and dog, 41-year-old Peter was a dad and husband. His wife, Lynette, and their 18-year-old daughter, Ken, seemed like a normal, happy family. Can you get a picture of me and sell me on eBay? Uh-huh. What are you doing? Bella could have used your support. I came straight from the airport as soon as I heard. Yeah, I don't like that number. But Peter's secret project in the woods started to affect his normal life. After Ken graduated from high school, her dad had been making video diaries for months. She's getting ready for college and likes nature gaming and cameras like her dad. Kayleen Keller. <laughs> All right, so how do you feel, Kayleen? <laughs> No more high school, yay! Feel different? No? You don't feel different? You got a new life ahead of you. No more freaking school. Well, high school. Yeah, you got to tell tomorrow to get your stuff out of the house. So. Oh, no! She's been with us forever. Sorry, Carson. Forever. Well, Ken had needed help, but only heard her dad's voice. Lynette also sometimes used the camera for her YouTube videos. Hey, everyone. My little puppy's looking outside. Okay, I got a lot of stuff to show you guys that I'm going to put in my store. I'm so excited. This is bag two. And I had so much fun making these two. You guys got a lot of products in here. But I want to first show you, look at Dino. He just got a haircut a couple days ago. My husband was like, he's looking too scruffy. I am a very shy person. And doing these videos really helps me open myself because I figured if somebody doesn't want to watch it, then don't watch it. I'm not forcing you to. So these videos really help, and he really helped me. Peter repairs computers for living. While Lynette, due to her health issue, was not able to work a lot, people thought they were handling their life challenges well as a couple, but things were not as rosy as they appeared. Peter's project Camp Keller was a large structure in the woods, camouflaged into the hillside. A tarp on the roof could reveal it but Peter concealed it with branches. Peter created a hidden bunker in the woods using materials from the forest and things from his home, which was an hour's drive away. He made a kitchen with vodka and used a generator for power. He built a wood stove from a metal trash can, which had a chimney. His bunker had items like five gallon buckets, heavy chains, and a hacksaw. Peter's constant fidgeting and complaints in his video indicate depression and anxiety, suggesting something darker in his plans. It's actually more comfortable for me to think about living out here, 
um, robbing banks, pharmacies, just taking what I want for as long as I can. At least it'll be exciting. It won't be boring. And I don't have to worry about Lynette or Kayleen. And everything will be taken care of. It'll just be me. Peter's desire to survive 10 years in the woods adds to the situation's strangeness. So make a home underground somewhere so I don't have to live around people. One of my projects today is to take all this wood that I've cut up recently and stack it up, pull it down. So if somebody stumbles out here, it's uh, not as noticeable. Just now, have the means I'm able to actually pay for it. I've spent a lot of money on this so far, thousands of dollars. Thousands more on guns and other stuff, other hardware I'm gonna need. Everything I can think of. He's considering leaving not just his life and job, but also Lynette and Ken, seemingly not wanting them in his plans. And before we explore further, if you like this video, please press the like button, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. At 41, on April 22, 2012, there was an explosion at Keller's mobile home park that caught the attention of neighbors and firefighters. After extinguishing it, investigators discovered something strange inside. Side. Peter Keller was not found at the fire scene. Cindy West, a retired sergeant and public information officer for the Keller case, was called back to North Bend for the intensifying investigation. She played a key role in handling inquiries. The police, focusing on finding Peter, located his car downtown with the keys inside but no trace of him. His workplace noted his uncertain departure, hinting he might not return, discovering Peter's withdrawal of $6,200 from the family bank indicated he was in trouble or escaping. The case saw a major development when police found a hard drive with his video diaries at his home, uncovering alarming details. His video diaries were vital in the search. You know, just the more I've thought about it, the more I understand it. I don't really feel bad about it. It's just the way it is. You know, certain things happen that cause this to happen. So. kind of accepted it and just rolling with it. They provided insights beyond his thoughts. Retired Sergeant Cindy West explained how police used these diaries, finding photos of Peter constructing his bunker. A photo with a power line near North Bend was a crucial clue for Detective Mike Mellis, who inferred the bunker's location near streams. They had photographs that Keller had taken on the mountainside as he's constructing this bunker from nothing's there to a little bit more to a little bit more. In one of the photos, you can see, I couldn't see it. It looked like a power line in the distance. Uh, so you're looking off the mountain toward, which would be North Bend, the city. You can barely see this power line and something else. Again, I didn't think it was a power line, but our detective Mike Mellis says, I think that's a power line. I think that down there is probably the city. And then according to these other photos, there's a couple streams nearby. So he does a lot of investigation and says, well, it's got to be in one of these two points then. And I, I'm like, I don't know how he came up with that, but he was exactly right. While his theory wasn't initially obvious, it proved accurate. Peter's truck sightings at a trailhead further guided police to Camp Keller. After six days, police located Camp Keller guided by smoke from Peter's chimney. They cautiously approached, uncertain of the number of people inside or their intentions. Police unsuccessfully used a gas canister on Peter's bunker and then planned to flood it using a creek pump and hose. After a grenade attempt also failed, police broke through the bunker's roof. Initially seen as a house fire, they later uncovered arson, finding a red gas can intentionally placed on the stove to ignite the fire. Police found gas cans, 
Ammunition and a bomb in the Keller home, set to detonate with the fire. Firefighters risked being caught in the explosion. The setup, including video diaries, seemed intended for destruction in the blaze. However, more shocking was the discovery of Lynette and Ken Keller, shot in the head but unscathed by the fire. Peter's videos, showing smoke and warning of heat, suggested he planned to murder his family. Retired Sergeant Cindy West shared her thoughts. We're gonna be left now as not knowing what happened? Did he snap? Why did he kill his wife and his daughter and, and take up in this bunker in the woods? Friends said he was a loving husband, so it was a total surprise. I'm glad it's over. I can't relate. He was a deviant man. He uh, planned for eight years. This case is so hard to understand. He didn't just kill his wife and daughter. He had a dog that went everywhere with him, even to build the bunker. He killed the dog too, fearing it might reveal him in the bunker. He had this dog that went everywhere with him, hiking or apparently to go build the bunker, you know, for, for all these years. And he killed the dog too. He was afraid that the dog would give him away in the bunker. And so he killed the dog too. Again, there's no explanation. I mean, I get that he obviously had some sort of mental illness. Dipstick wasn't hitting the oil with him, but it just makes you shake your head. Cindy, reflecting on her career, shared that the Keller case particularly affected her. She described how the police, upon finally entering Camp Keller, encountered more shocking findings than anticipated. They urged him to surrender peacefully, however. Soon after they attempted to communicate, a shot sound was heard leaving them uncertain whether it was an accidental shot or something else. Upon entering the bunker, police found Peter had taken his own life as they closed in. This might have been his intention from the start, to fulfill his teenage dream of living underground in the woods with no plans beyond his death. The police noted, concerned about potential harm to others given his capability to kill his family. Cindy expressed relief that Peter couldn't harm anyone else. The bunker was handed over to the King County Department of Natural Resources, which later destroyed it. County officials consider the bunker an imminent danger to the public and will take steps soon to destroy it. Peter's concealed funds were donated to a memorial scholarship honoring Lynette and Kalen. We'd love to hear your thoughts on these matters. Please share your opinions in the comments. Until next time, stay safe and stay informed.